when you first get into Amazon FBA and you start thinking about it as a viable business model for you to make money online, I know that there's a lot of questions that can come up and it seems overwhelming, sometimes it can seem confusing. Is Amazon FBA still worth it? How much money do you need? How much money can you make and where do you start? All these questions I see get asked every single day. Now, instead of making a bunch of different videos for these questions, the most commonly asked questions that I see every day, I thought, why not sit down, quick rapid fire them off so you can have all your answers right now in one place in one video. All right, so stick around and that is what I'm gonna do for you today. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. What's up Empire Builders, JC Franco here, the no bullshit Amazon seller. This is the channel where you need to be if you wanna learn about Amazon FBA without all the sugar coating and all the fluff. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and if you're already an Empire Builder, welcome back. Hopefully your empire is going strong. So let's get right into this and start answering these questions off, all right? So these are questions I see on YouTube and my free Facebook group, um, through emails um, and through my Instagram, right? So I kind of collected everything and it's just stuff that I know off the top of my head gets asked all the time. So let's start with a big one uh, because if you you don't have the answer to this question, there's no point in going forward because you're probably not gonna get started. Okay, so this question is, is Amazon FBA still worth it in this blank year? Whatever year you're watching this in, this is a universal question. Is it still worth it? Now, right now, we're hitting up onto 2020, so I'm gonna answer it um, with a simple word, and that word is yes. Now, I did a whole entire video of it right over there for the reasons, the facts, you want, you know, stats and the sources, for it all, but for this video, I'm gonna give you the reason why I say it is worth it in just a few simple steps, okay? So number one, it is still a very relatively unknown opportunity, okay? Becoming an Amazon FBA private label seller is pretty unknown. Now, if you want proof of that, go to the, you know, go to a mall, uh, go to your next family gathering and ask, you know, Uncle Willie, hey, do you know what Amazon FBA is, right? What's he gonna say? Probably gonna say no, unless Uncle Willie is hella hip and he subscribed to this channel, then hey, Uncle Willie. Otherwise, most people in your family don't know what it is, right? Most people at the mall are not gonna know what it is. Most people, when you ask them, hey, who sells those products that you buy on Amazon? Because a lot of people are buying on Amazon, but most of the people don't know who's selling it. Most of them will just think, hey, it's Jeff Bezos, or it's, you know, it's Apple when I buy an Apple product, or whatever it is. But they don't realize that the majority of the sales that go through Amazon are by third-party sellers like us, people who are just private labeling products, right? So that's number one, is that it's relatively still a very unknown opportunity. Number two is that for those people that are joining, right? Now, I'm not gonna lie, since from 20, whatever, 2012 to now, there's obviously way more people becoming sellers every single day, right? Um, but of those people, a lot of them are not quality sellers. Only 35% of accounts on Amazon are actually selling items, right? So people are creating sellers accounts and they're not actually selling anything. And of those that do sell, they're dropping off, right? Because they're chasing this get rich quick scheme. And if that's you right now, I'd seriously advise you to reevaluate uh, your goals and why you want to get into Amazon FBA. Right, if you're trying to get a get rich quick scheme and you're trying to chase this dragon of like, you know, put in a few, you know, maybe $3,000 here and then get a product that's flying, that's like a super fad product and then cash out, you know, 80 grand four months later, that's probably not gonna happen, okay? And those are the most, the majority of the sellers right now that are coming out to Amazon, kind of, you know, muddying the markets, but at the same time, they're, they're gonna be a flash in the pan. So if you are going to join Amazon as a serious Amazon seller with goals of long-term growth and building a serious product brand, then it's really not any harder now than it was before, right? There's just more people, there's more noise, but the process is the same and you're just as easily able to find success if you follow the right steps, right? That's why so many of my students in my Amazon FBA Empire Academy have cracked the six and some of them the seven figure mark uh, as Amazon sellers because it's just a formula, it's just a step-by-step -step process, right? And third is the high success rate, right? Now I already mentioned my students through my program, but just in general, over 40% of sellers on Amazon are making $250,000 a year revenue or more, okay? 40% are breaking 250K a year. So those are the people that are the serious sellers. I was telling you about this, you know, the rest of them are just the flash in the pants, right? And then there's, it's like 51% and more are making 100K plus. Right, so the majority of sellers on Amazon are making over six figures revenue every single year. Right, now you take into account that the average profit margin is about 30 to 33%, um, and 
the minimum, right? At minimum, you're making $33,000 profit every single year if you're in the majority 51%. So yes, it is definitely still worth it. And again, more of those, you know, if you have some questions about those facts I just threw out, you can definitely watch that video again that I pointed out to you over there earlier. Um, the link will also be in the description. But yes, I believe Amazon is still worth it if you get started now. It's gonna be better than if you get started a year from now or if you get started two years from now. But I believe the opportunity is coming and it's just growing uh, right now, right? So we are still in, in the golden age of this and it, it's still a very, very good opportunity to get into and it's not too late, it's not too booming, it's still very early. We're still in the infancy of what Amazon is becoming, right? Amazon's just taking over the world as we speak. Um, so if you start now, it's the best time to get going. All right, now I spent a little bit of time with that answer because I know it is the most important one. So the next one is, how much money do you need to get started as an Amazon seller? Right now, very important question, do you even have the capital to get in it? Okay, now there's a lot of variables to this answer. There's not really a one size fits all to this answer, okay? Some people, I've seen some of people start with less than $2,000, launch three products and make $30,000 a month, just like that, right? So like $1,500 for a product launch and everything included, um, whereas other people are gonna need a little bit more, right? So I like to say ballpark, a safe number, a decent number, uh, if you have it in the bank right now to get started with Amazon, is about 3,000 US dollars, okay? So 3,000 US dollars, I know for some of you, that's already a deal breaker, you're like, there's no way I can do this, and for some of you, that's like, okay, let's, let's get going, right? But either way, just know that number, because even if you don't have it now, you can still learn the process. Again, it's not going away, right? I have a lot of people who message me, they're like 17, 16 years old saying, hey, I wanna get started, but I don't know where to get started. I don't have any, any money, right? I always suggest learn the process, right? There's a lot to learn. Invest a little bit in yourself to learn the process, whether that is, you know, joining free courses, like the free course that I have, link in the description, link right over there as well, or my free masterclass, same thing, link in the description, link over there. There's a lot of free ways you can get learning. Save up your money um, and then get ready. Once you're ready to go, you can hit the ground running because you already have learned everything during your saving up process, right? So that's how much you need roughly, and I will do an entire video on that um, to kind of break it down, but just ballpark, 3,000, 5,000, you're good, okay? Next, how much time do you need? Now those are the two most valuable resources, right? Money and time. So time-wise, um, if you were able, I did, did a breakdown recently, uh, if I can, I'll link it there again. Uh, I did a breakdown recently of how you can actually get started from zero to profit in 90 days. Uh, and that is if you were to spend about an hour to two hours every single day on the business. Okay, so with an hour a day, let's just say, let's, let's call that seven hours a week, right? So you can break it up however you want, seven hours a week, over three months, you can definitely get started with the business if you have already know the steps, right? If you don't know steps and you need to learn as you go, or you, you don't have a, you know, a program like the Empire Academy uh, and you need to learn as you go, then about two hours a day, okay? Two hours a day or 14 hours a week, and within three months, you can kind of get that ball rolling. You have a product already listed and ready to sell on Amazon. So that's as much time as it takes. I know a lot of you, it's, that might be hard. You have, you know, you have commitments, you have kids, you, you, you have uh, school and a full-time job, whatever it might be, but if you can squeeze out just squeeze an hour to two hours a day out of your life. You can make a business that's going to free you of a lot of those commitments. If you think about it that way, I definitely um, would hope that you can see the value of building a business that brings you recurring revenue, you know, semi-passively uh, as you live your life. Okay, next, how much money can you really make from Amazon FBA? Now, again, this is kind of a silly question in my opinion, but uh, it, I see it a lot uh, because how much money you can make is the sky's the limit, but I guess the question is more like, what can you expect? What's the average? Depends on how seriously you're gonna take it and how resilient you are to the process and how able you are to follow you know, the steps and really trust the process. Right now, I'm gonna say on the low end, like if you just, you know, maybe you, it's your first product, you messed up. It depends again, on your goals, right? And it depends on the product goals. So on low end, I'd say it's be pretty simple to make $500 a month. Okay, be pretty simple. You wouldn't need that much to invest to make $500 a month. Honestly, it wouldn't be even that hard to find a product that would make you that much. There's so many products out there that if you wanna just make $500 profit every single month, that's totally within grasp of anybody of you watching this video right now. The fact that you're on YouTube and you searched, I know you have the, the actual technical abilities to make $500 a month off of Amazon FBA. Now, what could you get if you're a little more you know, ambitious and you want a little bit more? It's very doable to get two to $3,000 profit every single month within the first few months of starting. Now, when you talk about really scaling, yes, you can make up to six, seven figures every single month. Like I've seen many of my students do this process, make seven, six figures every single month, um, and it's very repeatable. Now, those people are the ones that are putting a lot of work into it, okay? Now, when I said one to two hours a, a, a day, the, the six figure mark is when you are putting in, you put in a year and you've put in three, 
five, seven hour days and you have a little bit more time, you're going, you're putting your entire weekends, you're sacrificing more to make more happen, right? Yes, it's achievable, but again, don't expect to just kind of coast through it and then boom, hit six figures uh, just like that. It is something where it really takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of work and probably gonna take a few more than a single product to hit that level, right? But if you're looking at just one product, one time, one off, and you, you kind of are you know testing the waters, definitely 500 bucks a month to 3,000 bucks a month is very doable with a single product on your first product, on your first go, if you follow the right steps, okay? Next question, what is the first step of product research? What is the first step of finding a product to sell on Amazon? Okay, so the first step of product research is, is knowing your goals, right? So a lot of people just try to find the most lucrative product that they can, but really, there's a lot of problems with that. Okay, so first you wanna know your goals. How much money do you actually wanna make per month? And then how much money do you wanna make per week? How much money do you wanna make per day? And once you know those goals, you're able to more accurately search for products that really fit within your criteria um, and that fit within your budget, right? Because the thing about finding a product that is having, you know, 5,000 sales every single month is that you need the capital to be able to afford inventory to make 5,000 sales every single month, right? So say you have it, it costs you just a single, two bucks to make a product, a single unit, and you need $5,000 or 5,000 units a month, you're looking at $10,000 right off the bat. So you definitely need to know your goals. How much money do you wanna make with your first product and then search within there. Now, once you figured out your goals, the next step um, is to find out how to actually verify a product, how to know if, validate it, to know if it's actually a good product. And again, video, whole video on it right over there if you wanna learn the five pillars that make a great product, okay? So once you've learned that, the next step of product research would then to be start looking and get a product research tool. Now I always suggest getting a product research tool because it's gonna make it your life just so much easier for a minimal cost, right? Now I always have to compare it to digging for gold. So say you have $10,000 buried in the ground, you have two options, you can dig it by hand, which would be doing it the free method, right? It doesn't cost you anything, but it's gonna take you months longer to get this $10,000 out, and it's gonna, you're gonna have bloody hands, right? So it's gonna be a lot of uh, trial error, a lot of, a lot of labor and a lot of headache. Whereas you could just go ahead and buy that shovel over there for 73 bucks uh, and dig that product out way faster, right? And it's it's gonna get you there, it's gonna get you the same spot, the same thing, the only difference is you had to pay $73 to get $10,000, right? And that $10,000 in the ground is an Amazon FBA product, right? And that shovel is a software. So definitely get the, the software because it's just gonna make it a whole lot easier for you. And especially if you know you wanna take this seriously, there's no reason not to do it, okay? So what software should you get? I always suggest Viral Launch. Uh, there's a lot of software out there, but Viral Launch is what I use, what I'm, what I know works, what uh, it's worked for me since I've started, uh, and I just trust the tool. And thousands of their other users are trusting that tool as well because it just works, right? And they have a huge suite. Um, if you want a 50% discount link to Viral Launch, click the link in the description. Lifetime discount for the, every single month that you pay for it. Um, and again, it's a affiliate link, obviously, I get a kickback, but then you get a discount for life. All right, so if you want Viral Launch, go click there right now. Next question, what barcode should go on your actual product. Um, so I know barcodes can be a little confusing. So the first thing you're gonna need is a UPC code. So UPC is like a, the barcode you see on the back of a normal box from like Walmart or whatever it is, okay? So you can just purchase that online, okay? And then once you get the UPC code and you create your listing on Amazon, you're gonna put in the UPC code um, into the section where it asks for it. And then once you're done that, you're gonna, it's gonna generate an FN SKU. Now an FN SKU is the one that you're gonna put on your Amazon product. Now this is Amazon's internal barcode tracking system um, so that they know what the product is when you create your listing and it all matches up, right? So UPC code is the first thing you get. You Technically what you're doing is you're turning that UPC code into an FN SKU and then you're putting the FN SKU onto your product, uh, every single unit of your product. Now you can do that um, yourself or you can get your supplier to do it, uh, which is typically what I suggest, or you can get Amazon to do it, but it's gonna be like 20 cents per, per thing for Amazon to do it. So just you get your supplier to do it, they'll typically do it for free, okay? So you need to put the F, you need to turn a UPC code into an FN SKU and that's what's gonna go onto your product. Okay, the next question, how do I bundle? So if you don't know what bundling is, it's when you sell a product on Amazon, say you're selling this tripod right over here, right? And on that same listing, you're gonna sell these glasses, okay? So this is considered a bundle. So when someone clicks you know, to order this, they're gonna get both of these products in a single box. Now that is bundling, and the reason you would do that is to stand out from the crowd, right? So if anyone's just selling just this, you can bundle it with an item that's complementary to this product, uh, and then you're increasing your perceived value, right? So how do you do that? Well, the easiest way to, to bundle is to find a supplier that makes both products, right? So if there's one supplier that makes this and makes this, they can just make them both for you, put them in a box, and the deal is done. Um, however, if you can't find a supplier that makes both items, what you're gonna need to do is get two suppliers to make separate items and then one of the suppliers is gonna ship the product to the other supplier and that 
supplier is going to bundle it for you or you can get both suppliers to send it to a packaging company and then that company can do that for you as well okay so that is how you're going to be bundling items it's just simple as communicating with suppliers suppliers have all the suppliers have basically done it before so if they need to send to another, to another supplier for bundling just communicate that with them uh, and they'll know what to do um, and they'll give you a quote for that okay so next thing you're going to want to do or the next question here sorry are what are the amazon fees and is it is it too expensive, right? So the Amazon fees are something that scares a lot of people, but realistically, when you look at everything Amazon gives you for the fees, it's it's super, it's tiny, it's a tiny fee, okay? When you consider you get access to Amazon's website with billions of users, you get Amazon's fulfillment, you get Amazon's warehouses across the world, they handle the customer returns and refunds and all this stuff that would cost you literally so much money to do if you're trying to do it yourself, right? So how do you find the Amazon fees? You can just go to, um, I'll, I'll link it in the description again, it's the Amazon FBA, pricing schedule or pricing fee website, right? This is Amazon site, but you can also go to the Amazon FBA calculator. So when you go to Amazon FBA calculator, you enter a product in there, you enter an ASIN, it's gonna shoot out the product. So if you're doing product research and you wanna know the fees for that particular product, the calculator is where you're gonna go, okay? And then you're gonna see the first fee, which is basically a fee that Amazon's charging you to use their services, right? And that's gonna be a 15% almost all the time, 15% for the item sale price. So if this is a $100 tripod, the Amazon fee is gonna be $15, okay? And then the next fee is the fee for, that's gonna depend on the size, the weight, and everything of your product, okay? So the heavier the product, the bigger that fee is gonna be. Um, and then again, that's gonna be broken down in the FA calculator, or you can just go to that, um, that page and see how they break it all down, okay? And then the final thing that you're gonna be paying for is Amazon storage. So for the storage, there's two different types of storage. There's standard size and there's oversized, depending on the size of your item again. Now, so our standard size from January to September, I'm just reading it off the site again, it's 69 cents per cubic foot uh, of storage, right? And then from October to December, which is uh, the reason they're doing this because it's the busy months, right? So Q4, Christmas time, um, October to December, it's $2.40 per cubic foot. Okay, so those are basically all the fees that you need to know for Amazon FBA. And again, it's really, it's really small when you compare it to all the value that you're getting from Amazon. Okay, without them, this would literally not be possible at all, uh, especially the story and, and the fulfillment. Okay, so how much does shipping cost? So when you're shipping your product from um, your supplier in China or wherever the supplier is to the Amazon warehouse, how much is that gonna cost you? Again, there is literally no answer for that because it is dependent on everything, right? What type of shipping are you doing? What product, how big is the product? Um, and all these different things. Now, that being said, you can go to Fredo's.com uh, and they have a shipping estimator for you, okay? So if you want to know, get a kind of an estimate on a shipping of the product, then you can go ahead and go to Fredo's and check that out, okay? So next, how long till I make my money back, right? How long till I get that return on investment? Now, that is a huge question um, and again, very variable, um, but typically, depending on how you're doing this, you're gonna see a return within four months. Like you're gonna see money coming back to you within four months of starting. So four months of you starting today to look for a product. And that's if you're doing, again, an hour to two hours a day. That's what I like to say, what you can expect. Okay, now if you're looking at from the time you actually order your product, that's gonna depend on how long it takes to make the product uh, and everything like that. But if it's within like 30 to 40 days to make and ship that product, then you're looking at about you know two months uh, from the time you actually place an order till the time money's coming back into your bank account. Uh, because once it's listed on Amazon, you need to make sales. And then once you make sales, you're waiting two weeks to get paid out. Uh, and then that's that, okay? Now, if you want a more detailed timeline, I actually just released a video right over here, how long to make money on Amazon FBA. So definitely check that out. It's like a 13 minute long video and it breaks down a timeline of actually how everything works uh, and how long until you can expect profits back. Now again, it can be anywhere between three months to six months, depending on how you do it, depending on a lot of things, but within that range is average. So final question for this Q&A, how do you pay your supplier safely? Okay, so this is the big scary part because this is when it becomes real, right? You found a product, you, you may, got it made by the supplier, and you got it all negotiated out, and everything looks good. Now you're actually gonna make this legit and send a big sum of money over to that supplier. You wanna make sure it goes smoothly. So the best way that I suggest doing it is through Alibaba Trade Assurance, okay? So this is uh, where Alibaba is kind of acting like the middleman for this so that um, you know that it's gonna be a safe payment. Now the thing about Trade Assurance that you wanna note is that when you are making this payment, make sure in the Alibaba system, everything uh, is, is listed out on what you expect the um, the supplier to supply for you. Because if you don't do that and you're like, hey, I didn't get what I expected, that there's no record of what you actually did expect, uh, then it's gonna be harder to, to win 
to win it back, right? So make sure you list out how many units, what the cost is, what the whatever the delivery time was, what the specifications were, everything that you kind of worked out with a supplier, make sure it's in there, make sure it's broken down so that if anything happens, you can go back to this and say, hey, look, I expected this and I didn't get this, right? It, you said this many days and it was this many days. Or whatever it may be, make sure it's listed out there. And the second thing that you can do for trade assurance is use a credit card as well, right? So if you're gonna use trade assurance and use a credit card, then you have kind of double protection uh, because now you have protection from your credit card company, right? And the same thing is gonna be if you don't want to use trade assurance or whatever reason, and the supplier doesn't want you to use it, um, then you can go through PayPal, right? PayPal will be another option. Um, but with PayPal, you wanna make sure again that you're using a credit card again through PayPal, right? So you have kind of a double layer there. You have PayPal and then you have the credit card which paid through PayPal. Now, the third, another thing about PayPal is make sure you're not paying through friends and family. If you're paying through friends and family, um, then there's, there's, not, there's no protection there, right? So make sure you're market as paying for goods or services um, and then go through that. Okay. And now the bonus about using credit cards for everything is that uh, you get points depending on what the credit card is. Uh, like for me, I have sick travel points. So I have you know, enough points to go anywhere I want just because of paying for products and paying for, you know, advertising costs. So if you, a quick little cool tip is get a good credit card with good points if you're going to start doing this business and you're going to have a lot of more online transactions than you typically would. Okay. Um, so that's about it. And then finally for paying suppliers, don't do a wire transfer unless it's someone, a supplier you've already used before. Um, that's just a rule of thumb. You know, sometimes I have one ahead and wire transfer for my first payment, but that's just a risk I was willing to take. Um, if, you're not willing to take that risk, then don't do it because there is really no recourse for a wire transfer payment once the money is gone. So if you have any more questions about Amazon FBA, put them in the comment section. I might make a follow-up to this video, a Q&A part two. I might just make this a you know, recurring weekly, monthly thing uh, to answer a bunch of questions in a single video because I know some of you, this is gonna help you. And if it did help you, please leave a like because that helps me, all right? And if you need more help, maybe to find a product, click that video right over there. Or if you want to join that free seminar that I mentioned and invest in yourself so you can get started on Amazon FBA on the right foot, learn how I was able to do it as a college or as a high school dropout, sorry, with absolutely no money, no education, no idea what I was doing, then click that uh, little square in the corner right over there. That's where the free seminar is at. And again, the seats are limited. Uh, and so if you want to join, register now while well, you still can because uh, I'm not going to be doing that forever. All right, I'm JT Franco, uh, you're an empire builder. Uh, never forget that your empire awaits.